Greetings AP Calc AB students. Welcome to video number two covering our slope fields. It's a conglomeration of topics 7.3 and 7.4. We're going to knock off a couple of examples. They're both going to be very short, but they're a little bit different kind of problem style that you're going to see. And by the time you get through examples one, which you've already seen, example two and three, you probably have a pretty good base of knowledge for the kinds of questions that you would see that deal with slope fields. So let's take a look at example two. So here we go. Here is our problem. Obviously, as you can tell, it's a multiple choice. It says shown to the right is a slope field for which of the following differential equations. So basically, you have to match. Only one of these differential equations will mimic this particular slope field, and we've got to figure out which one it is. There is a variety of strategies that's out there in the open that teachers share with their students. And I don't want to say that mine trumps the other ones and it's better. I, I like mine in that it um, it's a little bit organized, very systematic. It's easy to find these points. But please, if you don't feel comfortable with the way I'm showing you this, or if your teacher shows you something a little bit different, please make sure you listen and then just pick the one that you think is best for you. I call mine the four corner principle. I like to go after the corners because I can find that these are fairly easy segments to uh, locate. Notice this uh, guy up here is at negative 6, 6. So I might kind of label a column with that point negative 6, 6. And then I just simply plug in negative 6 for x and positive 6 for y, and I compute what's left. So if I plug in negative 6, 6, I get 0. Negative 6 minus 6 is negative 12. Ooh, this one's tricky. Negative negative 6 is 6 plus 6, which is 12. And then what the heck? Negative 6 squared is 36 minus 6, which is 30. And then I start looking and seeing if I can eliminate any of the choices that just don't even seem in the ballpark. Which, which of these just make no sense? And I, I think 0 we can get rid of because this is definitely not a horizontal line segment with a slope of 0. Nor does it look to me like it's negative. Now, as for, is it 12 or is it 30? Hmm, those are two awfully steep slopes, and I really don't have a whole lot to go by here, so it's okay. I can deal with this and just move on to another point, but just keeping in mind that I really only need to check C and D from here on out, and that's a great way to do this. So now I'll move to the upper right-hand corner. That's the point positive 6, 6. And then again, you're just wasting your time if you plug them into A and B, so don't do that. So if we plug in negative uh, 6 for, uh, for X, we get negative 6 plus 6, which is 0. <laughs> winner, winner, huh? And then if we plug it in here, 36 minus 6. Boy, that's back to our 30 again, isn't it? And it's pretty clear that the slope of this line is certainly 0. And so I think we've found an answer, everybody. Choice C. And you didn't have to go around too many more corners. Sometimes I've seen a third corner have to be used. Maybe even you have to go to the fourth corner. Goodness, what happens if you still don't have an answer? You're, you're out of corners, right? Well, you can start going for points around the origin. You can really do a lot of different things. Really, the bottom line is find the correct answer using the method that you feel most comfortable. All right, let's move on to example three. This one's again just a little different. I'm going to move my ugly mug down here. Let's read the question together. This is the graph to the right shows a slope field for the function y equal f of x. Boy, does it show a slope field. I wouldn't like to put this one together. That would take a long time, wouldn't it? If the initial condition is 0, 6, what is the range of the solution curve y equal f of x for x greater than or equal to 0? Okay, now we've got a very interesting problem here. There's a little bit more going on. I would probably categorize this question more as a topic 7.4 question than I would say a slope field graphing 7.3 question. So that's what I meant by these two topics being merged together. One thing that you want to do is you want to find that initial condition. Much like we did in example 1, 0, 6 is a point that lies right up about there. There's the point 0, 06 if I counted it right. Now what you want to do is to 
think about what the curve might look like that goes through that point, but yet adheres to these slope segments, kind of goes with the flow. Now, I know that this problem didn't state anything about you having to graph, but it is a skill that you're going to want to be fairly decent at. It's a possibility that you might be asked to do this on the AP exam. It shows up maybe once every about five years. It's not real common, but it's a very easy problem to get some points for. So what you're going to do is you're going to see that, well, these little segments seem to kind of have negative slopes to them, which will indicate that your curve is decreasing. There's no question that your curve decreases. And if you go with the flow, if you kind of go with the flow, you're also going to see that your curve is also concave up. And it seems to get less steep and less steep. And then finally you get to this wall, this horizontal line across here is actually going to serve as a horizontal asymptote. And so you've got something that could potentially look a little bit like that. Now, if I read more into the problem, I know it asks us to find the range. And it only says that x is greater than or equal to 0. Oh, OK, so maybe I can erase this and start only at that ordered pair, because that will affect my range. But I hope that this makes sense. That that would be your segment, your, I'm sorry, your curve that adheres to those slope segments. Now, I know there's a whole heck of a lot of stuff going on down here. Oh, yeah, there certainly is. But we don't care about that stuff. In fact, you don't want to try to draw in more stuff down here, even if you think you know what it looks like, because you would fail the vertical line test. And remember that the solution curves to our slope fields, to our differential equations at given points, must be functions. We're going to go through that idea more and more in the next few videos, in the next few topics. So that's all that you have to really graph. And then when you go to find the range, well, the range is all the y values that you see on this graph. And so they start at 4, but I don't believe that they include 4. So you could use the open parenthesis there, but yet they're going to go as far as 6, and certainly they're going to include 6. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan sometimes of the interval notation because of students' propensity to, to draw the dreaded parentha bracket, parentha bracket, right? We don't want that because it's kind of hard to tell what's happening. So maybe a better way to depict this would be for strictly less than um, the range values, the y values, which is then less than or equal to the 6. And that probably is a little bit more clear. But if you do a good job and, and distinguish your parentheses from your bracket, you should be OK there. And there's your range for example 3. Got a couple of more uh, examples coming your way for this particular topic. Uh, we're going to take care of them in one single video, I think. So be sure to stick around for that. And I think you'll have all of topic 7.3 and 7.4 wrapped up. Thanks for joining. Be sure to subscribe if you're liking the videos. See you next time.